Good morning, everybody. Well, it's another day here on the build. Now I asked if everyone would possibly show up today. We'll see. Uh, it's kind of funny because Melinda asked some of them, why didn't y'all come to work? The rain made us feel lazy. <laughs> well, it's also going to make your uh, pocket, your wallet feel lazy when you don't have much of a source of income, you know. Uh, who knows? There still could have been stonework going on underneath around by these verandas. Lots of things that could have been going on. But um, well, what can you say is what can you say. But I need some progress happening. And the rain does. The rain does a bunch of them. They just thought, oh, it's raining today. Just stay home. Uh, uh, any reason to not work. And that happens a lot here. A lot. Well, it wasn't like they needed to commute. They just got to walk over here next door. And mop, mop. And during that time, the others didn't work. He built this whole outdoor bar right here, and he's got a grill part of the way framed. And uh, he's been forming down walls in one of the guest rooms down below that the CR walls on that, we never cast them. He's got it all formed, and I'll show you that. And he's going to be ready to cast that today, and hopefully they have some help so they can tote those buckets of concrete in there and pour them down that wall. So we'll go look at that in just a minute. Well, let me show you a few things that's been going on. So out here with the little outdoor kitchen, my little bar and grill, um, the grill part here, the smoker and grill that we're building, um, we're gonna need to cast some of that as we're coming up and then build some other places. One of the holdups here on this that we've come to a stop on it is I cannot just pour this with regular concrete because the aggregates and all that, the concrete will get hot. Those aggregate stones, they're always holding moisture. It'll get hot and they will explode and they'll blow the concrete out. Somebody could even get hurt with that flying concrete. So then you need to fireproof that up some. And one of the ways they do it um, in these countries and all over here is they will use a little bit more like a mortar mix with a fine sand and they will add ash in there now some people call it fly ash but you can you know basically it's wood ash you can use wood ash and burn down wood keep the ash and mix it into your portland cement powder along with a fine sand and you want to do anywhere from a 10 to a 25 percent ratio and when you mix that all together, you come out with a more fireproof concrete against that cracking and blowouts. So um, now, probably no problem in the grill area at all. And what you want to do is have you a pan down in there that you can clean. The coals aren't directly on the concrete. In the grill area, no problem. Um, you know, don't build no super intense bonfire in your grill. But down here in this firebox, um, I probably will go a step further and try to get some type of little clay brick, fire brick to line the inside of that. And I'm limited on size in there. Um, I'm not like going to be smoking all the time or nothing like that, but I do want to have that. So I had noticed where I buy this stone at that they had some, um, small, thin, clay brick there and I'm going to check that out and, and I, I might buy a couple of them and as funny as it sounds build a fire and put them in the fire and I want to see how they react I want to see if they just break instantly um, I, I want to see what their reaction is in a fire and uh, I might look at lining those on the inside and my other option is and this is maybe a very viable option is I was going to go buy a steel plate to put in the top of my firebox because I'm gonna build a little oven up here on top right here. They need to chop this back, it's up too high. And this steel here will get bent back and we're gonna widen this out a little bit for a, a little oven right up here at the top. So the heat in my firebox can hit a steel plate, heat up an oven up here at the top and it'll be out a little wider, a little bigger where I can fit something sizable in there. 
Well, I was going to go up here in the city and buy that steel plate where they chop up old ships and different things and, and salvage uh, a lot of really good quality steel plate. And I thought, you know, I'm going to buy that one. Why not just go ahead and buy a few more pieces and just build a steel firebox right there and with a thin concrete wall on one side. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do on that firebox. And uh, then I can get the retention of the heat with that mortar on the outside. But at the same time, I can get the protection of the concrete and the hot fire inside. And also the mortar on the outside will protect my steel against rusting from all of the salt that will come in the air when we have really strong storms. So a little hold up on this. I need to make a trip to the city. I need to get steel plate. And I need for it to quit raining and dry up and some firewood dry up so that I can burn a bunch of scrap that we have around here in a controlled way and gather up all of that ash from it and use that ash to mix in our concrete. And I'm gonna ask the girls when they clean out the little cooker they use outside from charcoal and wood, when they clean that out, I'm gonna give them a couple cans there that they can start putting that ash in for me also. I need to gather it up and mix it into like a mortar mix. Now I've been going around in the house for the past couple of days putting in all the outlets. And as you can see, I've got it done over here on the stoneworks as well. And over here into the kitchen area. So I've just been working those all around in here everywhere, all throughout the house. I want to touch a real quick topic on that to give some of you a little heads up, a little warning of what you'll get into. You can see here's where you screw on your switch or your outlet. Same thing up here. And then you'll put your face plate on. It'll screw on or snap on to the switch or outlet. But right here, where this screw's on here and where this screw's on right here, you have to watch out if your screws are long. They'll run through and they'll hit this conduit back here. They'll hit the nipple on that. You've got to be careful about that. And if you just run your screw all the way in, it's gonna bottom out and it's gonna, if you continue, especially if you're using a power tool, or just being real forceful with a screwdriver, you're gonna strip the threads in this right here, okay? Now, these are solid plastic that cut their own threads, which I really like being near the salt water here. But many of them here in this country, it's a plastic box with a, it says it's a brass insert, but they rust. So it might be a brass coated or plated insert right inside in there. And What'll happen then is that screw will bottom out against this and it will pop that insert out and your box is now messed up and you're gonna have a hard time getting anything back in there. So I'm really warning you to make sure the length of your screws before you put your outlets on and all your switches and you need to cut those down the length. Now I'm gonna show you a little thing here that a lot of people don't know about on their tools a lot of you electricians do, but some people don't. And let me show you that real quick. So this is a pair of electricians, pliers and cutters and strippers right here, crimpers. It's a multi-tool for electricians. And um, this, this style, this design right here sold underneath many different brands. I would buy them underneath like a GB brand in the US. Here it's got a uh, Hausman, uh, Man, like I said, there's many different brands and it's the exact same tool. Um, it's a really good design on these. But for instance, and you can get other tools that do this too, but a lot of people don't know what those little holes right there are for. You see that? Insert the screws on this side. And what it's talking about is, so you'll take these screws that hold your your outlet or your switch onto the wall and you'll thread that down in here. All right, so for instance, see here, I've got the screw run in here and it's coming out through the back right here to whatever length you need. And now you just squeeze these, pull them back and you have just chopped that screw off the length 
can show you here. You can see the difference in the length right there. Here's another one that I've cut. You can see the length right there. So how, just thread it in however far you need to uh, trim off. And then there it is right there. Now your screw is not so long. It's going to be very important because you just go running these up there and they're going to lack a little bit getting against the wall and that screw is going to bottom out and you're going to damage your boxes. So really, take the time to do that. Find you a tool that's got a die on it that that will cut and trim those. What it is, is one side in this is smooth and the other side is threaded. And you want your screw to go in the threaded side and come out through the smooth side. And then when you chop that and you back that screw back out with a screwdriver, it cleans the end of those threads where it cut it. And so it's starting thread is nice and clean to go into the box. Now let's come in here into the master CR and closet. We got the closet floor, floor in here yesterday. It's off. Uh, ready to go besides it needs to be gravit still but we got the closet floor done and i'm very happy for that we've got cardboard on everything protecting the tiles and as well uh, we've got the floor and part of a wall done in here in the cr and before we continue tiling today i had set up my my faucet here we had one tube that there was a mistake when the guys pulled the forms. I'm gonna tell you about that too, so you can watch out for these things. But this is part of my faucet kit that's gonna go up in here in the shower. Put that plastic down, I'm sure y'all don't wanna hear that rattle. And another warning, if you can see there's a scar on the concrete going up the wall here. One of Melinda's brothers, he would do it repeatedly every time and I can't be there to hold their hand every time that the form wires and like that we would have this plastic set in place and we would have spacers between the form board and the plastic tube embedded in the wall to keep this tube embedded in deep enough into the concrete. And then we had tie wire around that to hold it all in place. And he would just, he did it in my kitchen, he did it in the other CR and he did it in here. He would not check those wires and he would just be just like a wild animal trying to break out of a cage and just start yanking plywood just ferociously, you know. And he ripped PPR pipe right forward out of the wall where it was embedded in the concrete because when we pulled the forms, the concrete was still kind of fresh. That way we could do touch up anywhere if we needed to while it still had a chance to bond. And, uh, he pulled it loose and then they tried to fix it right then and they tried to create this and they didn't set it back to the proper depth right here and it was kind of twisted in. So we chiseled out part of that area yesterday. We set the faucet up and then we got it all in place just the way it would be. We wedged a stick across in here to hold it back and we did a mortar mix right here and mortar this in overnight to cure and hold that back. So when you do a build, not everything's gonna be perfect, okay? You wear yourself out trying to make everything perfect. You're gonna have accidents like this that's gonna come along, but they're, they're fixable. But they're also preventable. So you want somebody that, you know, just will stop and be cool, be smooth, check their work. Um, he did this to me several times on electrical boxes too. And uh, I tried to have a talk with him when he did it the first time. I couldn't be there and know he was the one in a room about to do it again. I could not stand over and babysit every little move. But nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, this is a patch that we had to do before we set tile today. So it's dried overnight. I can actually remove this now. And uh, it's all good to go. 
We'll take this back off today and they'll be tiling up this wall. He had done the same thing right here with this double gang of boxes right here. Um, he didn't cut the tie wires, just yanked it and he ripped these both out of the wall before. We had to reset those, but you can't even tell that they were repaired, right? Um, something we had to do, but it did cost us more time and money and frustration in getting those put back. And over here, the plug for the stove, the outlet for the stove. If you see this crack, that's not my concrete crack like structurally. He did the same thing. See it all cracked around, right around the outlet, around the box. He did the same thing. It had cured a little longer at this point. He did not cut the wires, the little wires that were right there, and there that tied these boxes in. Didn't cut them, just yanking away, just being like old Bruto. And uh, he popped this box loose with some creep. He popped that loose and where the, the conduit goes up through there, it kind of pulled the creep right there and made a little surface crack in it. But these are things that happened that could have been preventable and we'll be going through here. Uh, tiling over a bunch of this, our cabinets go up against this anyway. So today I told them to come around places like this, get the loose stuff out. Like there's some loose crete right there, see? Get the loose stuff out, take a little mortar mix and patch this. There's a little loose piece too. But this is all preventable. It is very preventable. I want to show you here. This is where we had a little wood spacer right there. A little wood spacer that when it was formed, and there's a little tie wire that was there. There's a little tie wire that was there. Hold that wood in between, and that embedded the tube in, and uh, gave where the creek could come around to the other side of it, and see you don't even know that they're in here. Um, but you got to be sure and cut those because when you go yanking, you're gonna. Peel it right out of the wall. Over here again, this is at another shower. You see we had a little wood spacer that was in there. You can actually see the PPR pipe down in there. That was to keep the tube embedded deep enough. Same thing right here. This is where a little square block was at. And then of course we're tiling this so it don't matter. You just fill those over. You don't have to have every wall looking absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. Uh, all of these are tile areas anyway. Yeah, and then we had made a template for how far apart that faucet had to be. And we made a, a wood template that we used again and again in these rooms when we poured that we used up there on the form, set that just deep enough and all for the tile for that type of faucet because all the plumb is exposed and you want it to look beautiful. And uh, then we put these in here just to protect the threads just whatever we could find. This was some little nipples, screwed them in there, protect the threads. When we tile this, those come up perfect flush, perfect spaced, and once again, like that faucet you've seen in another room a minute ago, just beautiful on the wall. So today as well, I'm going to put in this threshold right here. Then we're gonna trim the bottom of the solid wood door and get it hung back on, but these thresholds, I uh, can't find them here. I brought these from the US. I put them in ballot buying boxes. I think I went to Home Depot and bought these. They're adjustable height. You can get them wood, you can get them plastic. Uh, that is the plastic ones there because I didn't want wood down in a threshold with this wet environment always in the Philippines. And because I don't know what kind of wood that there's so many creatures here that would just go crazy after some of those kinds of wood that might be okay in the US, but it might not be okay here because we have a whole different little set of bugs that like to eat wood. So uh, plastic is your friend here in this country and in a lot of tropical countries. So those are actually uh, fake wood. They're plastic like a UPVC or something. Folks, I was recording here for you guys and I tell you why. I just love my life here. I love it, I love it right here by the ocean, fish community. Let me tell you what, let me show you what I'm throwing on the grill. 